Hello, citizen. You know, we humans are mighty inventors. We make tools and shape the world around us from the wheel to sliced bread to the internet. But by far, our greatest invention is not a carby loaf or a series of tubes. It's a living, breathing, barking thing. That's right, we're talking about the invention of dogs. Let's go way back. 30,000 years ago, our ancestors lived as nomadic hunter-gatherers. Here they are, sitting around the fire that they also invented, cooking a feast after a successful hunt. The smell of meat travels outside of the camp, downwind to a pack of hungry proto-wolves, the common ancestor of wolves and dogs. They wander over to our camps, looking for leftovers. The aggressive ones are driven off, but the tame ones get a bit closer, give everybody a sniff, get to know the tribe. This is where the evolution of these canines splits off. The friendlier canines settle near human camps to raise their families. By protecting their pups, they protect us, and we'd throw them a bone. It was a mutually beneficial arrangement, food for protection. This continued for generations as these less aggressive canines pass on their tameness to their children. By 16,700 years ago, they're domestic, no longer wild and self-sufficient like their wolf cousins. They are dogs. They've evolved to become contributing members of society, helping us hunt and pulling our sleds. When we eventually moved to farming, we brought them with us, and they evolved to feed off farm scraps. We gave them nicknames, venerating those that were exceptional hunters, mourning those that died at funerals, burying them with ceremonial objects for the afterlife, or taking them with us to our afterlife, like the mummified pups of ancient Egypt. We were inseparable. Dogs were loyal, hardworking, and eager to please. But despite all that, humans wanted more. You have some people thinking, Yeah, this dog's okay, but I need something to help me track game. So they took the fastest dogs with the keenest noses and bred them together until they had a hound that could track game through the forest. Okay, sure, but can it pull a sled? So they bred the larger dogs together, which gave birth to bigger, stronger dogs for sled pulling. Yeah, but, uh, polar bear? Yep. 9,000 years ago in Siberia, they bred even bigger dogs to hunt polar bears. Already, people are learning to guide their evolution. A lot of modern breeds only go back 400 years, but all these breeds descended from those proto-wolves of 30,000 years ago. So how'd they get so different? A 50-year Russian experiment using silver foxes sought to answer that question. Believ's experimenters would test the foxes for their defensive reactions to humans. By selecting only the tamest 10% for breeding and exposing those pups to human contact from a young age, they began to act more like domestic dogs after only four generations. They wagged their tails and licked experimenters excitedly. They even started to bark. While this behavioral evolution was impressive, this being the only population of truly domestic foxes in the world, what was more impressive was the physical changes. After only a few generations of selecting for tameness alone, the foxes now had floppier ears and curlier tails, traits common in other domesticated animals. Their fur also began to change color, becoming lighter and more silver. Selecting for tameness resulted in a reduction of adrenaline. Since adrenaline shares a biochemical pathway with melanin, the hormone responsible for skin and fur pigmentation, the result was lighter coat. What this experiment revealed is that many of the physical traits we see in domestic dogs might have evolved from humans just picking friendlier pups. As some of the earliest known breeds start to emerge 4,000 years ago, we begin to see just how much we can guide their evolution. The Saluki, a close relative of the Afghan Hound, thought to be one of the most ancient dog breeds. The Samoyed, bred by Siberian Samoyedic people to hunt, pull sleds, and herd reindeer. The Basenji, barkless dogs used to hunt in ancient Egypt. The Sharpei, whose wrinkly folds gave no purchase to the wild boar they were bred to hunt. And the Chow Chow, the black-tongued lions of Chinese legend, war dogs said to have fought alongside the Mongolians. Yeah, these dogs are okay, but uh, what if I could make it portable and more compact? Shih Tzus, Pekingese, and Pugs, all bred in China, are lightweight and can go anywhere, great for nobles on the go. And the Aztec Chihuahua can be used as a living hot water bottle to soothe aches and pains. Tired of turning a spit? Grab yourself a turnspit dog. Victorians would keep their spit going all day long with a pair of these fellas. Of course, with the invention of clockwork roasting jacks, these guys were out of work. And now they're extinct. We kept on inventing dogs to suit our needs, creating new breeds with distinct features. The only way to keep those distinct features was to breed those dogs with other dogs that had the same features. 
Keeping the breed pure meant limiting their possible mates to the point of inbreeding. Because of those strict eugenics, purebreds had a fairly shallow gene pool to pull from. And over the generations, health issues began to emerge. Huskies are prone to autoimmune diseases. Labs get obese. Beagles get epilepsy. And one of those super adorable portable pugs might just be sitting there and its eye pops out. In general, mutts are much healthier. Grabbing the reins of their evolution and breeding them to suit our whims might not be doing Doggo any favors, but we've created hundreds of different breeds. There's something for everybody. Some are great for condo people, others for guarding junkyards. Whatever you're looking for in a pet, there's a dog for that. From sharing food by campfire in the Neocene to chasing frisbees in the park, dogs and humans have a long history. When we come home at the end of the day, they bark and jump around, licking our faces, sometimes peeing with excitement. One look into those puppy dog eyes and it's easy to see that dogs are truly human's best friend because we bred them that way. Hey guys, welcome to Tinyverse. Thanks very much for dropping by. Does that make any sense, dropping by at the Tinyverse? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I really hope you enjoyed that video about the history of dogs and pretty much how we've turned these wild beasts into our little pets. We are people who make videos. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm Nate, this is, it's Tony. It's Tony. We make animated videos on a variety of subjects, science, technology, history, and the nature of things. These videos take a lot of time and effort to put together from a lot of talented people. Uh, we got a whole lot more videos coming out. We're gonna delve into uh, Einstein's theories of uh, special and general relativity, uh, as well as breaking down things like E equals MC square. So yeah, just keep it locked to the tinyverse. Lock it, lock it into your browser please hit the subscribe button and smash that notification button or the other way around. We're both not great at this. No, we're pretty bad. Um, we're gonna get better. Hopefully. Maybe. So smash the subscribe <laughs> button and see if we get better. Until next time, guys. Keep on blasting through the tinyverse. What? I don't know, I'm trying to come fine. up with something on the spot.